Hello everyone and welcome back to Steins Gate Zero. I'm G, and uh, last time we were dealing with Kagari's slowly deteriorating mental st deteriorating good lord mental state, and the fact that Kurusu's memories are starting to re-emerge. But for now, let's begin. The two of us walked out to Central Street together, but we didn't really have anything to do. The air outside must have made her feel a little better because Kagari was starting to calm down. So, is there some place you'd like to go? Can I go anywhere I want to? Yeah, anywhere you want. And take me somewhere you went with Kurisu. What? Take me someplace you went with Kurisu, Okarine. The more I'd been with Kurisu. Where could that be? The coin laundry in the neighborhood? Lorraine Park? Yudon Sambo? I hadn't spent a lot of time with her at fun or romantic places. I'd spent a lot of time with her, but most of it had disappeared into many different world lines. I'd gone through that time again and again. But most of it had been spent arguing and working with her at the lab. We'd never spent any time going places to have fun. And we'd never made it to Aomori, either. Where did you first meet Karasu, Okarine? Where we first met. That's where I want to go. The place where Kurusu and I had met. It was... Is this it? A brightly colored building in front of Akihabara Station. The radio building. This was where it started. Yes, this is where everything had begun. On that day, the time machine appeared on the roof of the building. It was just after that when I met Kurusu. I could still remember it. The challenging look in her eyes. Thinking back, I may have already fallen in love with her then. But even though this was the place I'd met her, this was also the place where... where I'd... Okarin, oh, what's wrong? So sorry. Lately, I'd been so busy with Kagari that I'd started to think I was getting a little better. But maybe I wasn't. You're really sweating. I'm sorry. Is this my fault? No, that's not it. It's just... Whenever I came here, I couldn't help but remember. What happened that day. But... Let's go. You sure? You're not feeling good, are you? I'm fine. I couldn't just stand out here forever. I couldn't keep my eerie Daru and the others worrying forever. If I needed to get over it at some point, then... All right, let's go. Something soft touched my hand. Agri was holding my hand tightly in hers. Thank you. Agri led me down the bustling street towards the radio building. My knees felt like they were about to give out at any second. Even after I'd gone inside, I was still doing better than I had thought I would. I still didn't feel like climbing the stairs where it happened. We took the elevator to the roof. Ferris, a.k.a. Rumiho Akiha, had carefully locked the door to the roof so that no one who wasn't authorized could enter. I'd been given a key, too, but today was the first time I was able to use it. The first thing I saw after coming onto the roof was a stringly shaped object. A time machine. Wow, I remember this. I came here in this thing. Kagari happily ran up to the time machine. It was right after she'd separated from Suzuha that she'd lost her memories. She remembered going from the future to this place in 1975. First time I came outside here, I was amazed at how pretty the sky was. Unfortunately, it wasn't very pretty right now. Kagari spoke as if there was an endless blue sky stretching out in front of us. I didn't want to leave Mommy, so I stayed inside the machine and cried. I miss her so much. But Suzuha told me that I had to stop crying, and I couldn't be like that anymore. I was still so sad. And then the hatch opened, and I saw a blue sky. The sky in 2036 isn't blue. Yeah, the war made it all black and dark, and they wouldn't let me go outside very much. The mid-70s were right after the big economic growth spurt. Ecological concerns weren't as important as they are now. That was also when air pollution was a really big deal. The air probably wasn't as clean as it is now. If it seemed beautiful to her anyway, that must have meant the air in the future was really terrible. 
Oh, Green, is this where you first met Karasu? No, this isn't it. This is... Huh. A cold drop hit my nose. It, st it started to rain. Yeah, you're right. That's right. Alcabe? You're alive. Right. I forgot I met Ralentia here. What were you doing? Thinking? Oh. The rain had been falling then, too. When she'd learned that either she or Mayuri was fated to die, she'd come here and looked up at the sky like this. Ah! It's really pouring! Oh, Green, get inside! Oh, Green? What had she been thinking, then? She'd entrusted her fate to another person. To me. Oh, Green, you're going to catch cold! Hurry! Agree dragged me inside, away from the noise of the falling rain. A few moments later, I found myself sitting there. The place was being renovated and none of the stores were open. The lights were off too and it made the place seem very gloomy. Wow, that really surprised me. That day, after the rain, Kurisu and I had leaned up against each other and talked. And this was also the place where... This is it. Huh? This is where I met Kurisu. Strictly speaking, this is where I'd first met her in the Beta World line. That day, half a year ago. What were you trying to tell me earlier? What are you talking about? About oh, fifteen minutes ago, before the conference started. You were trying to tell me something, right? You looked really sad. You looked like you were going to start crying any second. Why? Have we met before? Thinking back, that was the beginning of everything. I wish I'd never met her. If only I'd have known this would be the result. If I'd never met her, I wouldn't have to feel this way. Oh, Karine. I felt something soft touch my face. Kagari. Mommy used to do this whenever I was scared. Why? You looked like you were going to start crying any second. Kagari patted me on the head again and again, as if I were a child. This is where I first met Kurisu. You're on the landing? Yeah, she left a terrible first impression. The first time she met me, she was arrogant and spent a lot of time glaring at me. Not cute at all. Of course, she probably felt the same way about me. After all, at the time I was rambling about nonsense like organization agents. But she still ended up being someone you cared about. That's right. That was in the Alpha World line, though. Right after I'd met Kurisu in this one, she'd... Your face looks a lot like Makisei's, doesn't it? How did you know? Maho told me so. And so I looked it up on the internet, and I was amazed. Maybe it's fate that her memories are inside me. Fate. It always was. Fate laughed at us. It toyed with us. Just hypothetically. A drop of rain ran down Kagari's hair and hit the floor. If I were to lose my memories as Kagari Shina, and they were all replaced with the memories of Kurisu Makise, would I turn into Kurisu Makise? It's not that simple. But what if it were? If that happened, would you be happy? If I became Kurisu, would it make you happy? It was the voice of the demon I tried so many times to ignore. I... I didn't want that. Or did I? But I wouldn't like that, though. Another drop of rain struck the floor. I don't want to disappear, not knowing why I was ever alive, not being of any use to anybody. Huggery. 
What's going to happen to me? I... I... Gregory was shaking a little. It wasn't just because of the cold. I'm sorry. No. I never did figure out what she was apologizing for. I'm going to catch a cold. Let's go home. Yeah. Just come in. The first time I went into Rukuko's room, it really did look like a girl's room. Wow, you're both soaked. You'd better hurry and change. Yanabayashi Shrine was closer to the radio building than the lab. So I decided to bring Kagari there. Mayuri had sent me a message on the way, so I had her come here first. I figured that Kagari needed Mommy Mayuri right now more than she needed me. Mommy. Just like I thought, the second she saw Mayuri's face, she relaxed a little. You must, you must have been so cold, right? I'll get a bath ready. Rukuko handed us towels to wipe away the rain and ran out of the room to start the bath. I want to take a bath with you, Mommy. And Mayushi? Sure, okay. What will you do, Alcarine? Oh, I'm fine. You guys can go first. Okay, thanks. Make sure you change so you don't catch a cold, okay? Um, I'll work something out. Maybe I could borrow Rukuko's father's clothes? Just as I got up to leave the room. Agree? What's wrong, Kagari? Something was wrong with Kagari. She was staring at Mayuri's face, confused. Kagari? Who are you? Huh? Who are you? It's me, Mayushi, Kagari. Kagari, my name? Kagari. No, I'm... I'm... Who, who am I? I'm... Uh... Uh... Ah! Uh! Agri tore at her hair and let loose a cry that sounded like it came from the pits of hell. Get a hold of yourself, Kagari! Ah! Uh! It hurts! It hurts! It hurts so much! It hurts! It hurts, Mommy! Help me! Help me, Daddy! Someone save me! Save me! Someone save me. Hungry! She was like a puppet whose strings had been cut. All the strength left her body and she fell forward. By the time I left Rukuko's house, the rain had stopped. We waited for a while after that, but Kagari showed no signs of waking up. She looked peaceful as she was sleeping, so I decided to leave her to my unit Rukuko and head back to the lab. According to the two of them, she had gotten confused several times in the past. But never like this. She might have underestimated how dangerous her situation really was. Her brain was probably under a lot of stress already. We needed a way to deal with this. And now. But for that. Got it! I did it! The second I opened the door, I heard Daru and Maho yelling. R really? I ran inside without even taking the time to remove my shoes. Oh, okay, perfect timing. Akabe, you're soaked. That doesn't matter. Did you guys pull it off? Mm hmm. Daru gave me a thumbs up. Nice work, Daru. I'm a super hacker. This is nothing. I could say that, but I knew exactly how much talent and effort it took to hack CERN. The average hacker couldn't do it. The name Super Hacker wasn't just for show. What about you, Hiajo? Were you successful too? I'm pretty good at my job too, you know. Mao stuck her thumb up, just like Daru had. Wow. Well, this was all thanks to the information you and Kagar gave me. In that sense, we were lucky that she had Kirisu's memories. No, you were the one who did the work. Thanks, I'll just accept the compliment. Now the question is whether it works, and the only way to find out is to try it. You're right. I went three steps, three trips to Kitchen Jiro. Sure thing. 
Anyway, everything was ready. All that was left was to find out who they were. But that was still the biggest problem. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna get some rest. I'm pretty tired. The sound of a ringing phone cut her off. Please, who is it? I'm about to go to sleep. Yes, hello? She muttered to herself as she took the phone to the back of the development room. So, oh, how's Kyrie Town doing? About that. Just as I spoke, a Ryan message arrived. Oh, this is probably fine. Kyrie woke up. She's calmed down. I let out a small sigh of relief and sent back an answer. Got it. Sorry, can you look after her for a while? I'll contact you if I need you. It's not good, actually. She forgot who my area was today. Seriously? That's not all. Right after that, she started complaining about a horrible headache and passed out. That's bad, isn't it? It is. We needed to do something. But unless we knew who we were up against, there was nothing we could do. What? You're sure? Sorry when I exchanged glances at the sudden voice from the development room. Oh, Tan, what's wrong? Did something happen? When we looked inside, Maho turned around in a state of shock. Someone ransacked my hotel room. The call was from the hotel. Maho was staying at a business hotel in Waco City. Sometime in the past few days while she'd been staying here, someone had ransacked it. She'd left her keycard with the front desk, but there were signs that the lock had been picked. She'd just given her okay to search the room. So, did they find anything? They're just about to call the police, and they want me to come back and see if anything's been stolen. Then they don't know what was taken? Maybe they stole your underwear? I brought all that with me. Do you want me to sue you for sexual harassment? Uh, please don't. My room's always a mess anyway, so it's possible that I just look like someone ransacked it. If I wanted to be optimistic, that is. I said the lock was four, so... It's almost certain that someone broke in. Actually, the same thing happened at the office not too long ago. That's not just a coincidence. Someone is after something you've got. That's right. I think I know what it is. What is it? Here's laptop. That. Putting all the pieces together, it seemed the most likely option. I could be sure that whoever tried to override Kagari's memories was the same group that attacked her in the other world line. Whatever those people were, they were after the time machine theory hidden in Kurosu's memories. But since their experiment had failed and Kagri had escaped, they turned their attention to the other thing Kurosu had left behind. The laptop and hard drive that Maho had. But if they were after that, does that mean they had it now? Wait, that computer the one you gave me? What? I really wanted to crack the password, so once I started staying here, I gave it to Ashida. And the laptop? Should be safe, right? Yep, in my secret hideout right now. But since I've been so busy with hacking CERN, I haven't had time to analyze it. That made me feel a lot better. Now, if only we knew who had broken into her room, but it wouldn't be that easy. Still, if they'd done something like that, they must be starting to panic. What'd they do next? Wait a second. We may be able to use this. Use it? I didn't want to waste time explaining, so I just took out my phone and made the call. Several days later, Kagri's condition was getting worse. Staccato footsteps echoed through the darkness. Akihabara got quiet early. The ever-busy electronic stores, the concert halls that were filled with cheers, and the coffee shops that were full of laughter, all of that gave way to silence as soon as night fell. A single set of footsteps walked slowly through the silence, never breaking rhythm. They belonged to a girl. It was dark, so it was hard to see her clearly. But it was very clear that she was acting strange. She had a cap pulled down over her face and was trying to avoid letting anyone see her as she walked. As if she was hiding from someone. As if someone was chasing her. And just as she was about to turn a corner, several men jumped out in front of her girl stopped in surprise. Suddenly there were men behind her too. 
Agri Sheena, right? One of the men spoke. The Japanese was fluent, but if she'd listened carefully, she might have detected a trace of a foreign accent. The girl they called Kagari was helpless as they surrounded her. One of the men thought to himself, This is the easiest job in the world. All they had to do was kidnap a single helpless looking girl. There was no need to bring this many people. No, it wasn't just him. Almost everyone there felt the same way. Stay calm and we won't hurt you. The men gradually began to close in. The girl simply stood there afraid, and showed no signs of resistance. This was too easy. Just as the man smiled and reached out his hand. Ah! He thought he heard the sound of something slicing through the air, and then he fell to the ground, clutching his hand. It looked like three sausages lying on the ground. Ah! Where they realized that the sausages were the man's fingers, another man went down from a high kick to the head. The man began to howl in rage. You fucking bitch! They leapt at the girl, swearing. But... <laughs> One of the men who was trying to attack her from behind suddenly screamed. You need to cool it. You don't want to make a lot of noise either, do you? A huge man came out of the darkness, silhouetted by the moon. Wow. That was all I could say as I watched these tough men go down one after the other. I knew from his size that Tenoji was strong. It was the other girl that really shocked me. Her disguise ruined, so Zaha jumped around like a cat. Each time she moved, the men around her quivered. I knew she'd undergone combat training, but I had no idea she was this strong when she was serious. The kicks from her long, lithe legs were like a work of art. Not bad, part-timer. You too, boss. The men fell to the ground without even having the time to draw their knives and guns. Several days earlier, when I realized that the enemy was probably starting to panic, I came up with a plan. In the last world line, Mooka had told me that someone was looking for Kagari. I wonder if that was true in this world line, too. So I asked Mooka to leak some information for me. The girl matching Kagari Shina's description came down this road at the same time every day. And today, a few days later, they'd all taken the bait. I hung back behind the corner of an alley, watching them fight. It felt kind of pathetic. But it was obvious that not only would I be of no help whatsoever, I'd actually just get in the way. So it was smarter to leave it to them. Everything's on your side. I heard Dyer's voice from the earphone in one of my ears. I called him and left the call connected so we could talk at any time. Is Suza okay? Is she hurt? There had been opposed to Suzaha's plan to use herself as a decoy. He must have been worried about putting his daughter in danger. Don't worry, she's a lot more amazing than you realize. Well, she is my daughter. If she gets hurt, I'm going to hate you forever, Okarine. You'd be better off worrying about the people she was fighting. I suddenly heard a high-pitched whistle. At the signal, the men started to turn and run. They'd realized they'd fallen into a trap and decided to retreat. Sorry, not happening. Noji's giant arms grabbed one of the men's hands. But... There was a hollow popping sound and the man's body went limp. No way. He was dead? He took his own life? Uncle, he's coming toward you! A piercing yell brought me back to my senses. One of the men was coming toward the alleyway where I was hiding. Our goal was to capture them and make them tell us who they were working for. If we couldn't do that, all of this would be for nothing. I ran out in front of the man without even thinking. My sudden appearance caused him to hesitate for a moment, but he kept charging without dropping his speed. 
I saw that he was holding on to something shiny near his waist. Ugh. Ha! Just as he hit me, so I slammed into him with a jump kick. Ugh. Gotcha! Kick knocked him directly into Snoji's waiting arms. Noji caught him easily and spun the man's arms around his back so he couldn't hurt himself. Uncle, are you hurt? Are you okay? I'm fine. Oh, Green, what's wrong? What happened? Don't worry, everyone's safe. Suzaha, did we get him? <coughs> Something like a scream came out, came out of his mouth. At some point, Tenochi had jammed what looked like a towel into it. He was probably trying to keep him from killing himself like the last guy. Hey, cool it. The one who's gonna have a bad time if there's a fuss. And we're still only on the first one, pussy. We've got nine more to go. <laughs> and we've got the eyes, and both ears, the nose. There's lots of fun in store for you. His voice was cold. This was the real Tenochi. This was FB. I wanted to look away, but Suzuha was watching without flinching in the slightest. I don't want to spend a lot of time on this either. You're going to tell me in the end anyway. Wasn't it better to just get it over with now? Mm -hmm. Hmm? Well, shall we go for number two? Mm -hmm. The man shook his head violently. Could have just done that to start with. So, who are you working for? Tenoji took the towel out of the man's mouth. He said something in a whisper so small I couldn't hear it. Noji's pallor suddenly changed. Stratfer? Hey, you're not lying to me, are you? The man desperately shook his head again. Stratfer, huh? It's going to be a problem. Stratfer? I'd heard of them. Back when I was into conspiracy theories, I'd look them up on the internet. Their real name was Strategic Focus, I think. They were an American civilian intelligence company, sometimes called the Shadow CIA. They specialize in military matters, and their skills had supposedly been put to good use during the Iraq and Gulf Wars. If a certain rounder like Tenoji said they were a problem, they probably were. This wasn't going to be easy. But now wasn't the time for being scared. You hear that, Daru? Start hacking strap for servers right now. Okie dokie. I felt myself starting to relax after I completed my first objective. But there wasn't time for that. This was where things really began. What's wrong, boss? Something bothering you? Nah, just that Stratford's a civilian company, you know? I mean, somebody's hiring them. No matter how many of these people you catch, is it really going to solve the problem? It's, it did seem strange, come to think of it. Hey, you. Are you really? Tenoji tried to wring the man's neck again, but... Damn it, you passed out. What a wimp. Tenoji sighed, took out a rope, then started to tie him up. Let me clean this up. You guys go. You sure? This isn't the end, is it? I was a little curious what he intended to do with them, but... Alright, I'll let you take care of it. I had other priorities right now. I said my thanks to Tenoji and hurried to the lab with Suzuha. Uncle, hurry! I, I know! Suzuha ran through the night like a panther. It was all I could do to keep up. The path to the lab seemed far longer than it usually did. We finally made it to the lab. Mayuri Ferris and everyone else were already there waiting. And Kagari, too. Kyrie was lying on the couch in obvious pain. Her breathing was shallow. Her complexion was pale. Something bad could happen to her at any moment. Daru, how's it going? Just a sec. I've got the route I used the last time I hacked it. Checking it now. The last time? Why did you do something so dangerous? It was a bet with a buddy of mine. We were going to try and see who could hack it faster. 
Winner got a year's worth of Gogo Curry. You probably had no idea how dangerous that was. Huh? Not going to ask who won? From the way he was acting, there was no need to even ask. Just hurry. Roger. Since their plan to steal back Kagari had failed, there was a good chance Stratford would resort to even more desperate measures. There was no time to waste. And... Oh, Green, you're not looking so good. No, it's nothing. It's not nothing, ya. Yeah. Let me see, ya. Yeah. Ferris ripped off my coat. You're really hurting, ya. Yeah. Okabe, you're bleeding. Oh, Green. I tried to avoid looking at it, but there was a lot more dark blood staying the side of my shirt than I'd expected to see. When the man had stabbed me before, it must have gone in pretty deep. I'm fine! You are not fine, yeah! You can, yeah, get the first aid kit! Okay. I'm okay. Forget it. Forget about me. Mayuri, how's Kagari? Uh, Kagari, hang in there! Kagari was still lying on the sofa, panting for breath. For the last few days, she'd been getting weaker and weaker. Her hand reached up into the air. Mommy. Mommy. Where are you? Mommy's right here. I'm right beside you. Mahi grabbed her hand tightly, and she finally smiled a weak smile. Mommy, tell me. Am I just going to disappear? It's okay. Green and Daru will do something. Green. That's right. You know Okarin, don't you? Okarin. Agree's lifeless eyes turned towards me. Don't worry. Just a little more. Just a little more and you'll be back to normal. Okabe. Huh? Erase me. Agree. No. Erase me from within her. That's right. She's going to... Those were Kurosu's words. Personality and memory were two different things. Just because she had Kurosu's memories, that didn't mean she had Kurosu's personality. But... He's Okabe. He's me. Those were definitely Kurosu's words. At least, that's how it seemed to me. I remembered what she'd said before. She'd told me to save Mayuri. She'd told me she couldn't sacrifice Mayuri to save herself. Maybe there was a tiny chance that Kurusu's memories would safely settle inside Kagari's mind. But even if they did, I knew what she'd chosen. She'd chosen to leave. She'd chosen to disappear. I had no way of knowing if the words coming out of Kagari's mouth were from another personality created by Kurusu's memories. But there was no doubt they were Kurusu's words. Right now, she was nothing but a formless thing called memories. So why? Why even now when she was nothing but memories did she still have to suffer so much? Why did she have to suffer at all? Sorry, Okabe. Teardrops fell from her softly closed eyes. Daru, did you find it yet? Kursu. I asked him to stop myself from screaming her name. Hang on, just a little more. Just a little more. This isn't good, Uncle. Suzuha whispered to me as she looked out the window. One, two, three. There's a bunch of them outside. Stratfer. Daru. Okay, come on, come on, come on. The tension was rising every second. Was he done yet? Wasn't he done yet? Got it. Daru. Alrighty, I got it. Bingo! Dukako and the others brought the treatment of device over, but I motioned for them to stay back as I looked down at the monitor. Maho leaned over Daru's other shoulder. Look at all the files that seem important and pick the biggest one. Wait, 
Big one? Um, could it be this one? The file name is John. That's Mozart's Christian name. That has to be it. I don't get it, but okay. There are a lot of files inside it, though. Let me see. Inside the folder were several files labeled with codes. There's more files. There weren't this many when we were doing the research. Which meant that after the Amadeus program was shut down, it ended up in Stratford's hands somehow, and they'd gone on to do more experiments with it. Well, these has to be Kagri's memory data, but... K6205. Huh? K6205 is Kagri's memories. Daru. Bokhel number 620. The magic flute. K620. I found it! Now just do it like we talked about! Compared to Kurusu's time leap machine, the process was a lot simpler. Since the memory data already existed, there was no need for a VR headset. Or the phone wave. All we had to do was use the decoder program on Kagari's memory data, then use CERN's LHC to compress it. Then we transferred the compressed data and sent it to the cell phone. Hurry! We're completely surrounded! Daru, are you ready? Okie dokie! Okay, do it! Wait! I looked up and saw that Maho was staring at the screen, her features frozen in an iron mask. What's wrong, Hyajo? Is this really going to work? If it fails, Kagari will... I reached my arm around Daru's back and put my hand firmly on her shoulder. I'll be fine. I guarantee it. Okay. Uncle! Kagari! I stepped away from the PC and knelt down in front of the sofa where Kagari lay. Okay, bae. Ready? Goodbye. Yeah. Here's Sue. They're here! Daru! Roger! The sound of footsteps coming up the stairs. The sound of the phone ringing. I'm 90% sure that this is a divergence point. Yep. Okay. This is definitely a divergence point. So, what we are going to do is we are going to save right here. The sound of the phone ringing. Ignoring the phone takes us to the alternate ending. And all these different sounds filled the air. Listen, Okabe. The last thing she said was, I think that I... Maybe you... Whether those were Kurusu's words, or Kagari's, her words were cut off by the sound of the door and the sound of screaming. I... I hesitated. Not only does I he did I hesitate to answer it, but I almost tried to tap the button to reject the call. But then Kagari's fingers cut mine off. And then her fingers, or maybe Kurosu's, tapped the button to answer the call. And then the phone up against her head stopped ringing. One point zero six four seven five six. Recursive Mother Goose. Oh, boy. Oh boy, that's, yeah, that's a great way to end off. Not only did we uh, erase Kurusu from Kagari's mind, but uh, on top of that, we also have shifted world lines, it appears, which is really exciting and really fucked up. And I'm really excited for seeing where this goes because Kurusu did get deleted, but the divergence point is whether or not we answered the cell phone right away, which is... I don't know. I don't understand what the difference is between us answering and Kagari answering. But I suppose, you know, that's just... I Something is going to become clear. But for now, thank you all so much for following my playthrough of Steins Gate Zero. And I'll see you in the next episode. Bye now.